Hello, I'm Laura Kababe from ATU. Today for my Year 8 HPE fitness assignment, I will be talking and explaining about the short and long-term effects when doing exercise and the effects it has on the cardiovascular and respiratory system. In the first scenario, I will be explaining about what happens to Nick's heart and lungs within the first couple of minutes when he runs three laps around the soccer field at NIST without warming up. I will also be describing how oxygen is transported into the muscles from the moment he breathes air in and how carbon dioxide is transported out of the body. During the first couple of minutes during exercise, Nick's heart begins to beat faster and pump blood around the body faster, which is due to the adrenaline released. This happens because Nick's body needs to keep itself supplied with much more oxygen, which also makes more carbon dioxide get released. More blood is sent back to the heart due to the muscles squeezing blood in the veins. The blood cells expand to accommodate the increased blood flow. Nick's lungs also have to work harder in order to supply more oxygen to the body and remove carbon dioxide as the muscle cells need to use up more oxygen. This causes the breathing rate to increase and the breaths will be deeper. So how does oxygen get to the muscles from the moment you breathe air in? Well, first you inhale oxygen through the nasal passages by breathing and then that oxygen travels down the windpipe which is called trachea. Oxygen flows into the lungs and into the alveoli which are surrounded by capillaries. The oxygen bonds to hemoglobin, the iron containing protein in blood cells, and travels into the heart. The heart then directs the blood through arteries, then into smaller capillaries that surround muscles. The oxygen is transferred from he hemoglobin to muscle cells and respiration occurs. The carbon dioxide is exported out of the body by exhaling. The carbon dioxide diffuses from the tissue into the blood and then leaves the body through the lungs. I will now explain the second scenario, scenario B. I'll be explaining the long-term changes in Nick's heart rate after training for track and field for four times a week for 15 weeks. I will also explain why he will have a lower resting heart rate. If Nick trains for 15 weeks, the long-term changes in his heart will be that his heart mu muscle will strengthen and become bigger. It will also have thicker and stronger walls. And the heart muscle will become more efficient in heart rate and stroke volume, which means the amount of blood leaving the heart after each beat increases. The heart is a muscle, and exercising will in fact lower the resting heart rate over the long term, and Nick wouldn't have to use as much effort to get his job done. This is because he will become fitter and have a stronger heart, and that would mean he delivers more blood within each beat. His arteries will also expand at rest, which allows more air to flow through the vessels, reducing the number of times the heart needs to beat because there will be an increased stroke volume. Thank you for listening and watching this video. Here is my bibliography that I provided in MLA format with all the sources I used to help me answer the questions in these two scenarios. Thank you.